Uh, my name is Milhat Poturovic. Uh, I'm Bosnian photojournalist. Uh, on, and um, for the first, for the last 14 years, I've worked as a photojournalist. Um, uh, mostly I'm focused on, so I was focused, uh, my work was focused on uh, Southeast Europe. Uh, but since 2020, I have uh, uh, been active here in Sweden. Um, working with visual storytelling has given me a great lesson about humanity and has helped me uh, discover and better understand the world around me. Uh, and that's how I start, how I, that was, the per, that, that's how, that was how I jump in photography. Uh, in my work, I try to highlight stories that can, uh, in different ways, increase the awareness of the uh, viewer and lead to, the, to pos uh, positive change in society. Uh, I hope that my photos can evoke empathy, inspire or give a hope, or simply encourage the viewer to think about uh, uh, specific topics. Uh, here I will uh, present myself and my work through the stories, the people I met and events uh, I attended. I think you can get to know me best uh, by getting to know my work. So um, I will start with this image. This is my uh, picture, this is my favorite view of my, of my hometown, Sarajevo. Uh, that's a unique view of mosque. Uh, the cathedral, the Orthodox Church, and the synagogue, which are located within a radius of two, uh, 200 meters uh, from each other. Sarai was often called the European Jerusalem because of its age-old religious and cultural diversity. Sarai has rich history and a turbulent past that has left its marks on its streets, architecture, and people. So, like, I can show you, like, maybe it's a little bit hard to catch when I speak about. So, this is synagogue, this is mosque, cathedral, and Orthodox church. So, everything is in one frame. That, that, that's not something that you see in maybe, that you can find in so close in one frame in other cities. So, that, that, that's what may, makes my city, from my point, like, different from other cities. So, uh, yeah, I will start with this picture to, to maybe introduce a little bit different why I shoot black and white. Uh, uh, this is a storm um, that has swept over the village of uh, Vlahi. That's the place is Kosovo, uh, near Mitrovica, and formed, uh, formed a beautiful uh, rainbow. Maybe you, you, you will not catch it because it's black and white, but this is not the reflection in a lens, this is a rainbow, and usually, I, I never thought that I will take a black and white picture of rainbow, but when I took it, I was like, I, I was, I think that makes me, um, that makes me to think more about to use black and white photography in my work. Um, the picture came about between the two assignments in Kosovo. All through, you can sometimes see the shooting uh, you should see me shooting in the color. In the later part of my career, I have had per, uh, preference for black and white images. Uh, there is something special about images that depict the subject without containing colors. Uh, they sort of get the stand for the story without dis distractions and can make the subject clearer, uh, even if the motif uh, is a rainbow. Uh, that's what something that's what something uh, like for that's something what 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 makes me feel feeling uh, so special about uh, uh, black and white photography. Uh, the next next picture. This is like now I will jump like more seriously in my work. Uh, this picture is from Bosnia. Uh, for me, I will start with, uh, when I say people, uh, I, 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 through, through the pe when I say I, I like to shoot stories about people. And that's, I think, the mostly impact on my, of my work have other people 
crush uh, their stories. So this is a story about uh, uh, Refia Zahirovic, a mother of 12 children, stands at the entrance to the 12 square, square meter room that is uh, their home in Visoko, that's near Sarajevo. Uh, without ac access to bathroom and with very limited uh, living conditions, she tries to motivate her children to continue their education. Um, of the 12 children, only one has uh, far finished primary school. Uh, Refriar uh, is um, determined that um, uh, the younger ones should complete at least eight grades. Uh, officially, uh, official fig figures uh, of the unemployment rate are missi uh, um, missing. But according to information from human rights organization, unemployment among Roma in Bosnia and Herzegovina is uh, close to 100%. Uh, whether a Roma ch uh, child goes to school is uh, largely dependent on parents, as some manage to break out of vicious circle of poverty thanks to education. Other remains on the margins without financial security. Uh, due to many years of discrimination and marginalization, Roma are the most vulnerable population group in Bosnia and Herzegovina today. Uh, I don't think that just in Bosnia, I think many other countries also have the same kind of uh, issue, a problem. Uh, um, the other picture, this is also, uh, I have made this picture in Sarajevo, my hometown. Uh, this is Elena. Uh, she buys goods at the market hall in Grbavica area of Sarajevo. Uh, at 62 years old, she has uh, transitions over the past four years. Uh, transgender people can change their le legal uh, gender in Bosnia and Herzegovina after undergoing, under, um, undergoing gender resignment surgery and other medical treatments. However, uh, these are not possible to implement with the country's borders. Uh, the lack of uh, medical and financial support for gender affirming surgery for transgender people makes this um, already long process even longer and more difficult. Uh, both hormonal treatment and surgery pr procedures uh, must be carried out abroad as they cannot uh, perform, be performed in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The costs for uh, um, the, the the costs for these are also not covered by the general health care insurance, uh, which means that you have to pay for your treatment by yourself. Elena is waiting for surgery in Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, in addition to the difficulties in getting adequate treatment. Uh, she, say, she says uh, that the hardest thing was losing many friends when coming out as a transgender woman. Um, invisibility, isolation, execution and exposure to violence, both in a private and public sphere, are the biggest problem for uh, the LGBTQI uh, population in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So I choose these maybe two stories per person to show like um, there are so many people who are like, um, how to say, uh, uh, discriminated in different ways. But I think these two groups uh, are mostly <laughs> and in an extreme level uh, discriminated. Uh, let's go. Yeah, now I will. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is story. Uh, my stories are not like easy to look, to watch, to listen because, like, I'm. That, that's that's what I'm doing. That's the 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 job of phot of photojournalists are to uh speak about really important stories so we can change or we can uh, do better things and usually that's not like 
nice fancy stories that like happy stories because okay that's already done and we are happy with that and so we have to maybe um, work on a really something which, which is really hard and uh, that can help us to move on. So this story is about uh, remains of identity. Uh, this story is unfortunately still relevant uh, as not much has changed since 2015 when I made this uh, photo reportage. As a res result of war, genocide, crime against humanity and the violence of inter uh, international law, approximately, uh, sorry, my Swedish now is coming. Uh, <laughs> approximately 30,000 uh, people have disappeared in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Of uh, more than 30,000 missing people in Bosnia and Herzegovina, almost 23,000 have been found. The largest number of, of recovered and uh, identified missing person in the world after uh, an armed conflict. But and progress, pro progress has been made, but it is important to continue the work and search for the additionally approximately 800 people who are still missing so that their families can have closure and uh, bury their uh, loved ones with uh, dignity. Uh, the mass graves in Bosnia and Herzegovina are some of the worst uh, ever seen and uh, required unique approach to identify the victims, victims' recovery from them. Uh, more than 90,000 people have donated their blood to the International Commission, uh, Commission on, on Missing Persons, hoping to find uh, out the destiny of their uh, loved ones. Uh, finding out what happened to these missing people is not only the problem for their family, but, the, uh, but also a problem for Bosnia and Herzegovina as a whole society. The identification of remains is essential to the process of peace building and stability in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So um, now I will uh, move on with this to explain this picture, actually. I have to explain this picture. This is Dragana Vucetic, the senior forensic anthropologist of the Podring Identification Project. She carries a bag contains human remains from Srebrenica at the International Commission on Missing Persons Podring Identification Project Center in Tuzla. Tuzla is also a city in Bosnia. In this Merge are situated thousands of remains of these killed during the war in Bosnia, those killed during the war in Bosnia. According to the ICMP, uh, cases exist where the remains of one person have been gathered from 17 different locations. So that's really like something what we don't here often we don't think it, it's possible, it will happen, but unfortunately people are um, capable to do these kind of things to, to cover the proof for something. Or uh, Next picture, this is um, uh, the personal belongings of, of victims on a table at the International Commission, ICMP, let's say, uh, in Tuzla. These are items of people who were executed beside body parts. These items are the last resort of their identity. So by this kind of uh, like people who have survived and, and, and trying to find their mem family members like can maybe recognize uh, their loved ones by these items because they remember they have something with that and that's like something that we we'll... The next picture. Um, uh, this is uh, Julsa Alic. She waits at the permission of uh, ICMP to assist in the recognition of DNA anal an, um, analysis of remains. During the genocide in Srebrenica, she lost two sons and her husband. Um, her husband has been identified and buried. Uh, her oldest son is in the process to being identified 
and her youngest son is still missing after all these years. Uh, the last time she saw them was uh, in July uh, 1995 in Srebrenica. In the period of a few days in July 1995, at least 808,000 uh, Bosnian Muslims were assassinated in a shooting range of, um, and killed by the Republika Srpska Army. Men and boys were systematically um, massacred and buried in mass graves. Uh, this killing became the single largest mass killing to take place on the U European continent since the uh, World War II. Um, I will move to, to the next picture, which is about her still. Here you can see ICMP staff uh, present Jules uh, uh, with a diagram of uncovered skeletal um, remains and photo of clothes found in mass graves. So that she can help finalize the process of identification of her son. So here, the, the, like these uh, colored <laughs> parts are the parts they have found. And this is like the clothes. So if after all these years, it's hard maybe to remember everything, but we don't know, like the brain is really uh, amazing thing. So like our memory is amazing, but something just can have to trigger some things so we remember again, uh, like pictures, like if you show some, someone pictures, it will help them to remind, is this, this is wrong, but okay, <laughs> this, is, this was wrong picture. Uh, the next one, this is also Dragana Vucetic. Uh, she compares the bones during the protests <laughs> at the collation body remaining uh, exhumed from mass graves and identified by DNA. In the identification center in Tuzla, 122 kilometers north of Sarajevo. Uh, and forensic uh, anthropologists uh, make the final determination of the identification of the remains. Um, uh, that will, I don't know, like if you, if you have questions so or want to speak about something, you can uh, I, I will move on on the next story, but you can like uh, ask me whatever you want or, or uh, be free to to, um, to to ask after I finish every story. So this is the the next story. And it's a question. Yep. So uh, maybe you mentioned that, uh, but how many have they identified through this process? Twenty three. It was like it was not till today, but I'm not sure the number that has changed because I was doing this. Uh, I have to see like a few years ago, but uh, th th then it was like twenty three uh, thousand has been identified. So like th they're searching about more like than eight 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 thousand. They need to be identified. Mm -hmm. But like so many people uh, uh, died because of um, they got older and uh, and so many families uh, maybe there there are families who just like maybe two people survived so like but we still meet, need to do that because like to know what happened to these people too there's so many reasons like I can speak about it in a different from different topic. Uh, the next, the next picture, yeah, that's the next picture. The heritage, 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 heritage of darkness. Uh, I choose this story because I don't think that uh, you in Sweden have opportunity to see this kind of uh, story, uh, because so much, so many things are have been done uh, differently, and this is a different country. So. Um, I made this story on the occasion of Miners' Day in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Miners, today, uh, Miners' Day began on December 21st in 1920, when the miners in several mines in Bosnia and Herzegovina went to the strike due to their harsh working conditions. Brown coal mine Breza, this is a brown coal mine Breza, uh, has existed since 1907. 
Uh, it is located 20 km northwest of Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, some families in Breza have at least three generations uh, of coal miners, uh, where their father, sons and grandson are coal miners. Uh, brown coal from the pit feeds about uh, 1,020 uh, to 1,250 uh, families and the daily production of pit, uh, two pits, Kamens and Sretna, is about 2 tons, 2,000 2, tons. The coal mining job requires a lot of effort at depth of 400 meters. A working day flows in the darkness, dust and sweat. These people are digging the ore that heavy industry depend on in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the coal that produces the electricity that warms the many homes in Bosnia, a country that still struggles with poverty. Uh, despite the machines that help them dig coal and a lot of work is still done the old-fashioned way, by hands, it is still one of the toughest and most dangerous job. Uh, in the last 50 years, hundreds of miners uh, lost their lives in the pits through the Bosnia and Herzegovina throughout Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, exposed to the constant danger of poisoning, explosions, fires, and collapse, oh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. despite everything under the dust clothes, they hard work, these hard workers uh, con conceal a pure heart that is always positive uh, and ready for a joke and funny things. That's what's special, I think, about them. When you meet them and go under the ground, like they're always joking, and their uh, energy, it's really something what you don't expect. Uh, proud and brave, with the tools in their, with, in their hands, they begin their day with the arrival at the work site, gather each other uh, good luck and go underground. The tradition, the tra traditional mining, uh, grating good luck carries the desire to once again turn, turn uh, once again return to the light of the day. Um, this is uh, the coal miners are sitting while the chief of the shift uh, reads list of the, the names. Um, and uh, in order to determine who is present or absent. Working time is divided in three shifts per eight hours so that the coal mine operates 24 hours. So they're sitting here and like maybe you can recognize they're smoking cigar. cigar. So the, which is not like here in Sweden, like it's like that's, that's something really different. And uh, but they don't smoke in in my in mines. So they, they, they it's just like they smoke a lot before they go 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 there and uh, start there to work. And that's something like maybe that usually people see just in the movies. This kind of uh, dramatic, uh, uh, how to say, view the dramatic uh, moment. When the light is strong because it's morning, and and like like if I put this picture like color, it will be still like almost black and white. <laughs> so the next picture, yeah, this is I spent one day, no, one day, like two days with them, uh, two shifts, but one shift in underground, like, and it was a really great experience for me. Uh, I didn't think about the danger, and if someone asked me now to do it, when I have family, like when I, I have kids, kid, um, uh, I will think think twice, like uh, should I go there or not? Because you don't have so many equipment, like uh, to protect yourself. And in the, I, I can show you, like this is like uh, holds like the how to say. It's not that it holds the roof but you feel it holds something. And when I spoke with them, uh, okay, I will stand here, and, and they were sort of like, no, no, you move here, you have to stay here. And I was like, why? But I have these, like, uh, nothing, nothing will fall on, on my head. Like, 
oh, you think this is for that? No, this is not for that. And I was like, but for what is? And like, yeah, when you hear like noise, it's like breaking, you run. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, because nothing can stop the, if the, if the everything crash, like nothing will stop. So this is like signal, sign that you should run to other place. It's like an alarm system. It's like alarm system. Like it's, it, it's, 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 re, it, it, from one way it's amazing, but from other way, like it's really scary. Uh, so this is like coal miners prepare uh, work site and manually dig at a depth of uh, 350 meters. Uh, today there, there are machines that extraction of coal mine make it easier, but in many places in the coal mine, they still work like old fashioned way. Uh, so as you can see, like, and, the, and the, this feels like it's like, it's like maybe uh, silver because of light, but it's just black. And that's like also amazing to see when you're underground, like, you think, okay, everything's black, but when you put the light, like it makes these uh, reflections and, and it makes like it's silver. And you, when you, if, you, if you will catch it, I took like one piece, like, okay, I want to see this, like, because I, I, I was thinking this would be different outside, but it, it's almost, it's just black outside. So it's amazing like to see that, what kind of, um, how to say, not material, but how it works in a different um, space in the dark space and in, uh, outside in, uh, uh, with uh, so much light, daylight. Uh, this is Adel Nohic. Uh, he's using a shovel, push the coal on a conveyor uh, belt that uh, draws coal to the surface. He started working in the coal mine when he was 19 years old. He's uh, from Breza, that place uh, near uh, coal mine. His father and grandfather were also miners. Uh, for more, almost three years, uh, he works in a coal mine. So can you imagine like someone 19 year old, it's ready to, how to say, uh, to go underground, <laughs> even if it's not safe, like to make bread for their families. Um, I will show next picture. This is an, one simple, picture that coal miners standing in dust next to their equipment. They may only carry uh, their lunch and bottle of water and nothing else. It's forbidden except the equipment, which is not like so, how to say, modern. It's like most of them, like you can see probably on, a, can you, yeah, you can see on the last picture, like it's just t-shirt with, uh, it's ordinary t-shirt. And it's really, I, I can say it's really hot, but it's warm there. So if you have something more, I, I had something more, but it's, it, it can be really warm and it depends in which directions you, in which part of uh, coal mine you are. Somewhere are really good, like, um, how to say, um, the air uh, ventilation. ventilation. But in some, in, some, in some places, it's not so good, so it's much warmer. I can, yeah, I can show the next one. Yeah, this, so, so this image, this is like dusty hands of coal miner who eats his meal during the break. And it's nothing special, it's, it's bread and, uh, yeah. It's, I don't know what the word for that, I, I forgot. But it's simple lunch nothing special so they and he has tattoo here like you can see and yeah you have like short time like have a lunch turn and move on to the next uh, maybe place to 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 dig the coal mine um, uh, this, this picture was uh, I, I took uh, after we came out so this is in there uh, like this, this coal miner takes off dirty clothes after work. Personal belongings are kept in baskets that are hooked to the chain, um, risen and locked. Uh, so you put like in your basket and you like took it up and locked it. 
So it's, it's, I don't, uh, I think this place really could like to make movie about something, but it's, it's impossible because they work 24 hours. So, so, uh, but and for me, it was interesting, his tattoo and everything. And he was a simple guy. He was just like, he that didn't care about me. Like, oh, look, oh, you're shooting, okay, fine. And they, are, they, they don't have any, I never had a situation that someone asked me, like, oh, why are you filming? Stop filming me or whatever. Like, they're oh, okay, fine. They're so easy to communicate with them. But they look like really tough and strong and everything and danger like, but they are just like soft souls like everyone else. Um, yeah, the next picture. This is like uh, the dust from the mine on the floor while coal miners uh, take a shower. Um, coal mines take, uh, yeah. Coal mines, miners take a shower in the, in the dressing room that's actually next to the dress, dressing room. Uh, dust from the mine is not easy to wash. Sponges and rags are required to scrub it away. Yeah, that will be the, the last picture of this story. If you have questions like... Uh, yeah, like, Feel free. where do you get the inspiration to go and shoot something like a coal mine? And then how do you get access and how long do you spend with the people? Uh, do you go there and start shooting straight away or do you get to know them and yeah. them around a bit and then take the camera? This was on the occasion of Miner's Day in Bosnia Herzegovina Lake. Uh, so that was the reason why, sh okay, it, it, it it's Miner's Day, so it's, the Miner's Day is coming, so maybe it's good to like speak about them. Uh, how hard it's still to work, and I think... Did you start mm, with um, mm, uh, And like I prepare for, like to publish it in the um, 25th, uh, 21st November, I think it was, December. Yeah, 21st December. I, I'm not sure right now, but... Um, and yeah, you send the email and like explain. I worked for the media, so it was much easier for me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm saying like, I'm working for this, this. I would love to tell a story about this. And uh, if I can, if you can approve me and like just, and uh, they respond to you and said, okay, yeah, when you come and uh, you, you don't have to put so many details, but they, they just, it's also, access is not easy, but if you work for media, like it's different. And uh, of course they trust you that you will do the work, uh, that you will not do something else, whatever. But you can do whatever you want. And you usually, when I ask them like to spend the whole shift in underground, they, will, they I think they were surprised <laughs> because most of other my colleagues who were there or wanted to shoot a story about them, they are just coming and take a few shots, spend maybe one hour and come back. It's like short <laughs> visit. And I want to spend to come like in the morning. At, it was at six o'clock, seven o'clock, I don't know. I don't remember now. And uh, yeah, I, I forgot my lunch. But it, it was not a problem. I could go out whenever I want, but I didn't want that. I think adrenaline gives you uh, uh, your body energy. So uh, what was uh, other questions you had? Yeah, it was just the process. Yeah. How do you get access? Yeah. And how long? But, uh, obviously, this is mm. reportage, so it was really yeah. pretty short. But I spent two uh, days. Uh, like one day was underground and because I didn't I was so exhausted after a like shift of eight hours which was uh, like seven two o'clock or something about two o'clock I was done so when you came up you're like okay fresh air everything and you're you, you like after one hour you just sleep it's so probably because of fresh air uh, comes and uh, punch you and you're like okay like when you go to mountains and come back like you just feel a little bit not tired but uh, because of air probably so yeah and second day I came uh, 
yeah, I came ar around two hours, like when I finished the shift, but I was, I want to take picture when they coming out. This is just like, I, I choose few pictures. I didn't want to show everything because I don't have time for that, I don't think. But I just want to, you can maybe visit my website and there is like all these, like maybe in more details and more pictures. And I took the also when they coming out, some pictures uh, because it's important and details like uh, uh, on the surface, uh, what is important for the story. So yeah, I hope I answer on your questions. Um, yeah, the next story, yeah, this story is uh, one of the most important story for me uh, because uh, I don't know how many of you heard about Srebrenica, uh, but uh, 2023 marks uh, the 20 years since uh, the Srebrenica genocide happened. Um, in the period of a few days in July 1995, at least 8,000 8, Bosnian Muslims were assassinated in a shooting range of um, uh, and killed by the uh, uh, Republika Srpska army. Men and boys were systematically, systematically um, massacred and buried in mass graves. Uh, in 2007, the International Court of Justice in the uh, Hague made a decision according to the which the crime committed in Srebrenica in 1995 was uh, classified as a genocide. These killing, yeah, I said like in a story before uh, that Jules said that the woman which is uh, trying to find her sons, uh, that these killings became the single large mass killing that took place on a, a European continent since uh, World War II. Uh, all through, it is an indisputable historical fact that the International Court of Justice in The Hague clearly, uh, uh, clearly uh, character characterized the mass crimes that began in the Srebrenica as a genocide. Um, there are still people who uh, openly deny it in their statements. Uh, denying the genocide in Srebrenica is the same ideology as the Nazi ideology of the denying the Holocaust. Uh, in order to have a better future, it is really important uh, how we are related to past. Uh, as long as we are surrounded by injustice, I think we have to, um, we have no rights to turn out hands or close uh, our eyes to protect ourselves from whatever tragedy is happening uh, around us. Um, this picture, um, you can see a woman. This, this is not, uh, it's, it's not easy to find this kind of, uh, how to say, to take this kind of picture because usually there are so many people here. Um, and uh, to find like one person just sitting next to the uh, coffin, it's like something, you, you, you're just lucky maybe it happened to you that you have opportunity to do that. Uh, uh, this is a woman placed next to the coffin of a relative uh, who was placed among 520 newly identified Srebrenica victims in the abandoned car battery factor factory in uh, Potocari near Srebrenica. It was made in July uh, 2012. Uh, among those to, to be buried um, are the remains of 48 people under age of 18. And among them are six uh, uh, schoolboys, often 15 years old at the time uh, when they were killed. Um, the next picture shows I was approached to this a little bit different. It's not just purely clear journalism because I don't want to show everything and I want to I wanted to play a little bit with lights because it's so it to be there it's like your 
you I think you, when you come there you 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 discover a new feeling in in you, yourself like you you don't think you're capable of some things but and that something will crush you so not easy but something will crush you so fast but that's why like I approach it a little bit differently because here on this place you can see just people crying everyone is crying around and it's not easy to take pictures also of people crying and it's it's maybe it's harder not to show people crying than show people crying I don't uh, I have so many pictures of people crying but like this assignment I was like dedicated to show a little bit from different perspective uh, this is a uh, a woman touched the coffin of a relative who was placed among 520 newly identified, sev identified servants of victims in the abandoned car battery, battery factory uh, in Potocari. Uh, in these coffins, yeah, only a bone or two found it in primary and secondary graves throughout po Podrinje, were moved several times in the past 17 years. So, like some people uh, buried just a small bone that they have found, like of uh, their loved ones, because they are maybe they're too old, they can't wait, and they want to find peace. They, but so many people have found maybe maybe two bones, but they want to find more because they don't feel that's they 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 just. They just feel it's <coughs> not enough. They need to find more bones to put in uh, graves. And usually, uh, if they found, if if they uh, buried their lot bones, just one bone, and they find more bone, they put it after in a coffin. But I think that's more like that's really sensitive and emotional uh, uh, for members of family. Uh, the next picture is a woman also praying next to the coffin of relative who was placed among others. Uh, most of mothers and relatives buried only, bar like I said, only body parts. Um, yeah, uh, I think. And she's like praying, uh, like Muslims are pl praying with the hands up. Uh, and this light, like what came from from the from the from the one window, I, I'll, you will see maybe at the end a little bit better. The last picture, uh, what is outside? Because I think maybe I, you didn't think, remember, but the first picture, like how the windows uh, are, um, you can see just light from the windows and shadows. And it's really dark here. <laughs> and if it's like not sunny outside, it's dark. Um, yeah, this is a, a coffin with a number of 520 in the abandoned hall of the uh, former car battery factory in Potocari. Uh, 520 <coughs> victims uh, will be buried at the memorial center near Srebrenica on the 17th uh, anniversary of massacre of 800 men and boys which the International Court of Justice defines as genocide. And this is um, the, the last picture of this story. Uh, it's the view from the abandoned hall uh, showing the flag of Bosnia and Herzegovina at the place where the victims of the genocide in Srebrenica will be buried. Uh, the flag of Bosnia and Herzegovina is, uh, in Potocari is at the half uh, uh, how I don't know how to say, but like it's uh, on on half of um, it's not it's it's all uh, through the all year all, uh, through the all year uh, all year it's not up uh, the the flag is not up at the um, like last. Ha, yeah, half stone, half stone. <laughs> it comes Swedish and English, and I'm like just you. It comes Bosnian also, so also <laughs> also. Yeah, um, 
After the prayers, the coffins containing the remains were carried over the crowd before being uh, uh, lowered in the um, uh, fresh uh, dug graves. Uh, and this picture is uh, the place. This is view of uh, rows of white uh, mm, marble tombstones in the Potocari Memorial Center. The rarely completed remains of the victim rest under each of them. Uh, the memorial and graves are um, of the victims of genocide in July 1995 are annually visited by nearly 120,000 people from uh, from, Bo from Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also uh, from all over the world. Um, the Srebrenica Potocar Memorial Center is a uh, memorial complex built in memory of victims of the genocide in the area during the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So you can, like from this view, the, like there's no end of this and it's really uh, it makes you think like what happened and why and how, how 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 can human do this but unfortunately it's happening and probably it's hap this kind of things are happening now right now somewhere so yeah that was the last picture i don't know like if you have any more questions or I can move on to the next. Yeah, fine. So this is a little bit positive story. <laughs> uh, it's really, uh, this is the project I'm working like from, uh, um, this is ju just part of ongoing project. Uh, in uh, 2016, I met its smile and I have covered his story for several years. Um, the sport is one of the most important facts in uh, preserving the health of children and adults and for creating skills that future, future uh, influence uh, further social integration and uh, life opportunities. Ismail is growing up in a society where differences are not easily accepted but it is precisely the prejustice that Ismail and his parents refuse to accept. He is born without arms and with underdeveloped feet, but he is, has happily found a place for himself in a much larger area than uh, the society in which uh, he lives. Uh, with the parents' support, new world have opened for up, for, for, open up for Ismail. Six years ago, he was afraid of water, but uh, just one year of training made him a fearless swimmer and regional champion at the competition in Croatia. Uh, since then, he has continued to win more medals, as well as the ad uh, admiration of his friends and the rela rela relatives. relatives. Uh, the boy who has previously been rejected by a number of preschools uh, simply because of uh, his disabilities today, an excellent swimmer, skier, snowboarder, uh, hoverboarder, uh, rider, hoverboard rider, uh, among other many other things. Uh, Ismail's story shows us um, how individuals became the ones uh, who change the things when a country system fails to do so. A flows system uh, where humans' rights are deprioritized compared to nationalism, corruption and nepotism in society that is still feeling the aftermath of the 1992-1995 Bosnian war. Individuals like Ismail are a light in the darkness and the inspiration that uh, can give hope for better and different society for future generations. Um, this shows us how important it is to build a fair society with equal opportunities for everyone, where every individual can achieve a lot in life, regardless of functional uh, variation. 
Um, this story also was uh, nominated for the Swedish Picture of the Year in the category uh, Reportage of the Year in 2021. So, um, yeah, this shows like he smiles rest after the 50 meter backstroke race at the Sarajevo Open 2019 swimming competition in Sarajevo. Uh, he has born without arms and with uh, undeveloped feet. Uh, as I said, um, I don't know, like, can I say, yeah, we can, I can move to other picture. And here, this is like comp one of the competitions in Croatia. Ismail is waiting with the other swimmers for his from his cat category to swim at the, uh, at the competition in Zagreb. Like most athletes, he feels like anxiety, anxious before uh, every competition. But once he has started swimming, the anxiety disappears. Um, four years ago, he was afraid of water, but just one year made him a um, yeah, fatal swimmer in regional and the regional championship at the competition in Croatia. Um, the next picture is an uh, underwater picture. <laughs> uh, Ismail swims during a training se session uh, at the Olympic, uh, Olympic pool in Sarajevo. Uh, his parents used to drive him 70, kilom 70 kilometers uh, between home and Olympic pool in Sarajevo once a week and uh, could not afford the travel cost for more swimming practice. After Ismail's head coach, Amel, uh, publicly highlighted Ismail's potential, a number of people have offered to support him and cover travel costs for one additional training session per week. Um, this is these pictures were made in Belgrade in Serbia. Uh, he smiles, hold a spoon with his feet, foot uh, while eating um, cereal during breakfast in a hotel restaurant in Belgrade. In the beginning, he smiles uh, swimming lessons were planned for therapeutic uh, treatment uh, of his back because he smiles owns um, uh, it all the all time uh, it's like um, so I'm trying to, to, to find the word like maybe yeah smiles it smiles bends it all the time when the when he eats so uh, writes and does other everyday things um, but sports has, has helped him like to uh, to have less problem, let's say, not to have it at all, but have less problem on that. This picture is also made in Belgrade. An elderly couple watches smile as he rides a scooter in the lobby of the hotel in Belgrade. He's best at swimming, but he also likes to ski, bike, ride, scooter, hoverboard, uh, yeah, he, he, unfortunately he grows up in society where differences are not ex, uh, e easily accepted, but it's, uh, it is precisely uh, this prejudice that Ismail and his family refuse to accept. Mm. And everyone like at the beginning sometimes, I, 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 I will come to that like later. I'm rushing myself like to say something about him. This picture, as you can see, like Ismail is in the middle. This is like Ismail poses for a group photo with uh, other uh, owners uh, at the Bosnian and Herzegovina Athlete of the Year Award for people with disabilities. He received a special award for his outstanding contribu contribu contribution to the development of sport for people with disabilities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Families are often left to support their children with disabilities um, 
without uh, understanding support or help from institutions and authorities. Uh, despite this, Ismail has far more achievements and skills than most typical children of his age. <laughs> it looks scary, doesn't it? Like, oh, but he, that, that was when he learned to swim and he was good and he loved it. This is like Ismail's celebrations. Uh, Ismail celebra cele celebrate um, his birthday with coach Amel and the other members from the swimming club Speed. Uh, when Ismail was younger, he fell into a small pool in which he began to choke. After that, he had a fear of water. Uh, at Ismail's first training session, it took him uh, an hour before he agreed to get in the water. Uh, after two hours, he didn't want to leave the pool. Uh, with just a few months of training, Ismail was able to dive in and swim uh, the length of the Olympic size pool with, without the help. So I think like, I, I start this story like I was, it was a Simon like short to, uh, to shoot a video about this story. But I was so amazed by him and I like, I said to myself, oh, I have to do more. I have to like scratch the surface and go, I think this kid can show so much to the world. Uh, I understand that here in Sweden, like pe people with disability have different, maybe better conditions. Not perfect, but better than in Bosnia. But in Bosnia, it's really like, no one thinks about them. And, and the saddest part is that government and don't think about them. Everything is on family or parents. The next picture. Ismail gets the high five from his coach during the training of the, uh, at the Olympic, pool, Olympic pool in Sarajevo. Uh, people used to stare at Ismail with a lot of prejudice the first time coach Amel brought Ismail to the pool. Uh, now they see Ismail as a champion, something he had, he and his coach achieved together. He is in inspiration uh, to many people, both children and adults, and so many media have done uh, stories about him, and it never ends because every year he made something new which is like okay we have to do again because it's uh, he's, he's amazing kid um this is picture of their living room <laughs> ismail and his uh, sister hannah play in the living room in the presence of their parents uh, the parents say, say that it is the attitude and of institutions and authorities which goes against all legal, moral, or ethical principles that hurts them the most. Uh, such ignorance makes atypical children invisible. But we are lucky that there are some people in society who recognize that it doesn't have to be like that and we can do it. We don't have to wait for government or someone else to do something for these kids. Um, so the text picture, <laughs> this looks scary. I don't think that I have a courage to do this, but Ismail has. Uh, Ismail does a um, flip, let's say, uh, before going to bed in a hotel room in Belgrade. Uh, all through he part participated in a swimming competition in Belgrade and won the medal, medal that day. He still has energy to play. Uh, on a daily basis, he refused to, refuses to prejudge this society has against people uh, with disabilities. Uh, this this picture 
I want to like maybe tell more about it because it's something that you don't expect. And you are, when you see this like, oh, like where are his parents or whatever. But yeah, his father is here, but he don't like, almost children, they don't listen to their parents. They want to do what they want. And it's, this was just one uh, moment when I was like, yeah, I asked them, okay, can I take a few pictures when you are going to sleep? Because I, I need for my, I feel them like my family member. We are now so close after all these years. And they say, yeah, yeah, come in. And, but he will not sleep now. Like, <laughs> like it's, we, like maybe after one hour, two hours, he will go to sleep. He will, he will go to bed, but he will not sleep. Yeah, like I, I just want to see, like maybe if I catch something. So I was like trying to catch, but nothing happens. Like, okay, everything's like, he's like maybe doing something and his father is preparing everything. And I was like, okay, I should maybe back up a little bit like leave them alone so i was like standing behind me was the behind behind me behind me was um uh, the door uh, for hole so i was like uh, okay i should leave but i should take maybe try to take one picture from here and i was like doing this and he was like just sitting on on, on a bed and i was like doing this and he was like and he's speaking with his father and he stand up and he was like one two three and do the flip but then i was like and i was like why are you doing that like like and he was like what he has done like this like why are you doing that and his father didn't see that but it's for him nothing scares him and uh, yeah that that's the story be how this picture like you never know when the i think this is my best pictures uh, uh, if they don't have a fear, I think that no one should ha have a reason to have a fear for them that they can do something. I think uh, they can do much more than we can imagine if we if we give them the chance to to show us. Um, yeah, I think that will be the last picture. And if you want to speak more, if you have questions about it, this I'm like really happy to answer. I'm still working on this project. It's hard to stop, <laughs> I think. Every time when I see something, <clears throat> it brings me like, okay, but now I'm in Sweden, so it's not easy to go there to, to but I promise myself, I'm waiting for him to go to first uh, Paralympic Games. So I think there, I can like put the, that will that can be like the last picture in my story that from here you can get here but if just we these <clears throat> like people or children whatever like I speak about all people if we give them chance if we are not one who's telling them like no you can't do that no it's like you're not capable of whatever like that that last picture of him swimming on Paralympic Games will be like, I think, the sherry on the top of cake. And I wish him all the best. Uh, maybe I will, but that will, the next Olympic, Paralympic Games are in Paris, uh, 2024, I think. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I start to plan like to go there and I'm in contact with them uh, to see like, okay, can they go? Will they go? How it's going on? And and now I think when I, unfortunately, I think I put, put the pressure on, on, on coach. <laughs> I was asking like, oh, are you, are you planning like uh, to go there? And he was like, oh, you're putting pressure on me. Now I have to think about it. I was thinking, but now I really have to think about it. <laughs> so yes, they are planning and I hope I can, like, with that picture I can finish and I hope he will get a medal. It doesn't matter. It's not about winning. It's about, uh, it's, it's much, much more about, uh, for, uh, much more than winning. So, yeah, that's, I never spent so much time on one story, but I'm so happy I have done that. And I think the photography is amazing thing can do amazing thing uh, for society if we use it in the right way. And 
and I think uh, everything in photography is in patience. Patient. If we are patient uh, with approach, with story, with uh, with uh, to Where wait. Are you publishing these pictures and these stories? Is it something that's been released all the time, or are you this setting it all up for a book at the end? Or I was thinking because I was. This is my first long-term project, and, and, and I didn't expect it to be a long-term project. I was expecting it to be a good, strong story. But it may... <coughs> so many times I have sh uh, shoot him. So uh, I have so many pictures from different, different places. Really good pictures that I was thinking, like, probably I'll, I was, I, I'm thinking to make a book. But that's also like investment and everything. And I think because that can be an amazing book. There are so many children like him, I think. But I'm just showing from his perspective. Uh, there's also in, in this club, there are also so many great kids who are doing the same thing. But I'm, I, I start with, with him and I'm trying to, 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 to show from his perspective, not to like go around, but... Uh, uh, it, 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 this story can be done in different ways. And uh, I, I was thinking about the book, and I, I was thinking to publish that. Uh, I, I published it once in, in Bosnia, because I, was, I didn't have a patient to wait. I was so excited because I have so many things to say. And I was working for Radio Free Europe. Uh, they have a website, they are online, they are making multimedia stories. So I, I was thinking that, like so many people in Bosnia need, need to see this. It's important. I know maybe it's not done. It, it, there's more things, but like we we don't have time to wait for it because I think that can open mind of people to understand better, to look differently to towards people with disabilities. And I was like speaking with my. Uh, Chief edit, editor of, of Chief, and uh, uh, yeah, I showed them pictures and, and, and I wrote a story about everything. And it was like, when have you done this? And I was like, yeah, I was working after, I was going after work, I was going uh, during the holidays, and because I, I, I didn't see this as my job, as a work. I said, I, I felt this as a, how to say, obligation to do. Because, like, that's why I'm a photographer and photojournalist. And maybe no one can pay me so much to work, like, how much? Six, seven years on one story. No one will pay for that. But I decided to do it by myself. Uh, I was working on other projects and take money from that project. Like, okay, you can pay me for this, but I'm, took, take, I'm taking money for that and spending in this uh, travel cost and everything. And yeah, I hope so that uh, uh, yeah next year uh, I will I, I will have opportunity to finish this. And yeah, because it's hard. Uh, I, I think I think it's hard to 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 finish it, to put it in book. If you put a book, then it's done. So, <laughs> is it done? I don't know. But I think it's 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 really good, especially for Bosnian society. I think people need this, and I. I'm, I was, I'm, I'm happy that I published. From perspective now, like it, it was not so smart, let's say, uh, to publish it if you want now to finish that and to maybe, let's say, sell that story to someone, some bigger medias, like uh, international medias. Like that's not good for a story if you have published it. So they'll be okay, it's published half, maybe, I don't know. If I didn't publish, they will like jump. But I never think about it and I don't. I don't have that kind of approach, like a business approach to my work. I and um, yeah, I, I'm happy I'm published because one one thing happened, which which makes me really happy. Uh, the re, one reaction came to me, and they didn't know that I'm that I have done this that story because one. I, I heard from other person that was in other place, so they spoke about people with disabilities, something, and that there was one 
let, let's say, older guy, who came up, no, 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 I saw one story uh, on Radio Free Europe, and like he said, I don't know how old he was, but as, as I understand, it was older. Like, like people with disabilities are capable to do so much, like there is that boy in smile, and like we, we, it's on us to help them. And like, if I change mind of one person with that story, I have my job is done. Like I, I have done my job. Like it's, it's, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't have to change the world. But uh, if I change perspective of one person who thinks like, no, it's impossible, and then he sees like, okay, now I think it's possible. That's a big thing. And I think that's photojournalism uh, job to do that kind of things, to make us think, to help us understand, to give us a hope. So... I think, I think it's been very interesting to listen to you and uh, all the stories you've told us and also uh, how important it is to uh, show the world what what's done and what should not be done and the consequences mm. because that's in your stories I think mm. and so it's been really a pleasure to listen to even though cer certain parts were really hard to mm. yeah to, to process to look too. at but mm. it's uh, I mean we need I think we need those reminders mm. too yeah and also to see those happy Mm. I mean, so you, you get the mixture, happy, and also <coughs> the stories that we mustn't forget. Mm. Yeah, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I left this last um, story because I think it's really inspirational. Mm -hmm. it, there's nothing sad about it. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's sad how people treat, how government treat people with disability. But... Uh, as long as other other people are there, like there's hope and there he's he's happy. He's one happy kid. And it's a good way to get awareness. Mm. Yeah. And it's I understand that when I spoke with my wife, because I have to learn so many things here, it's different. System is different, much better. So I, I was always like, okay. When I speak about this kind of stories, like from Swedish people in Sweden, like perspective, like it's like, yeah, but you know here, da, 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 but yeah, but in other other places in the world, like it's a big problem, and I think also our it doesn't matter where you live, like is we are responsible to as we can help each other to help each other. The, the borders are just just borders. Uh, and I think, I think, like, the world is a great, great place. There are always good and bad people, but, um, and we can, it's, it's most important what we have done, more than important what others haven't done. So, yeah, I hope he will come also in Sweden if they get the Paralympic um, Games in 2030, or... I, I was thinking they, they they will apply for, so yeah I I I I was I was hoping like I will see him also there, and he and as I remember he was like like shy kid like, and now like he's a boy like he's like, okay let's do this like do this, so it's it's really amazing to to have opportunity, to see, people grow, to through my work that's why I love my work and okay there maybe daily news politics stuff which is news and maybe let, let's not say boring it's important but there's nothing more than just the information but there's so many good things like uh, how through my work like okay like in Srebrenica you are there and you're crashed after you you feel yeah like you put on your emotions like Inside, because you're a professional, you need to work. You can't cry and work. Like, it's, it's, you will not do your job. And you have, like, everything put back. And you think, like, you are strong and everything. And, you, and after day, like, you think, okay, it, it goes well. But after three days, you crashed. 
you cr like you can't for, <laughs> that's like I, I was first first time when I was there it was like really emotional and uh, I was like okay I'm, I'm strong this is professional professional and I'm I have done everything and everything was fine send pictures like when I and we were there two three days and after like two days when I sit to my laptop next to my laptop to like maybe edit more pictures and I was like I was here and then you then you start to cry and you you, you don't you don't like speak you don't you don't have to uh, like why I'm crying like because it's you're human and that's like now the emotions you have to left your emotions because and if someone asks you like no it's just something that happened three days ago so I need to let it's not easy job but you have to learn how to do that like this with him like he's I'm like so excited every time when I have to uh, meet him or his coach and all the, all of that group of people which I really love uh, I'm, I'm like adrenaline is in me every time like oh, I'm so excited oh, let's do this let's sit, set a drink of coffee whatever but because they give you energy you can with their energy you can like I think you can move the mountains and this kind of thing <laughs> something which is impossible so they're like my job is like today is like this and tomorrow will can be like that like my one colleague said uh, <coughs> Today I was, I was um, at a place where one mother is crying for, uh, because she didn't have a food to give her child. And we made a story about, like in a two hours after, I was another place, one mother is also crying because her kid is going, is leaving the, the country he want to study in US like and it's hard like to 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 understand that in different circumstances but the pain sadness it's the it's same there's no like you can measure the pain but you're shocked because how for them it's Different situation, but uh, maybe same pain. Similar, not same, but similar. So that's also like show, like to 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 feel that like, okay, this person is crying for this, but this one like does she knows like people have real problems like no like everyone problem is a real problem like. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thank thank. I, I would love to thank everyone. And especially Steve, who uh, made contact with me to do this. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again. Uh, I will try to get involved more in, uh, in uh, uh, this uh, club, photo club. Uh, <laughs>